is I want to give another example of a derived stack. Um, so let's say x is uh, some derived pre stack and f a quick and shape on x. Then I can define a new pre stack which is called the total space of f. So if you think about f as a vector bundle, well the, vector, the total space of a vector bundle is also space. So you can try to define that. So the total space of f, well, I have to define the function of points. Um, so I have some um, cdj r. And this is going to be the same as pairs of, first of all, a map into the base. And second, uh, a section. Of the pullback of this quasi-parent sheaf over spec bar. Okay, so this is the total space of a quasi-parent sheaf. And an important example of this construction is when F is the Catan complex. <coughs> So then, then the total space of the Cotangian complex, by definition, this is the Cotangian bundle, if the Cotangian complex exists, and the total space of the shifted Cotangian complex, let's just shift it by some number, um, that's the shifted Cotangian stack. This is called the shifted Cotangian stack, and this will play an important role later. So first of all, um, yeah, let's define first for general uh, direct pre stack. So Alex satisfies the following universe property. Stack, I haven't defined it in the lectures, and yeah. it's not the, the difference will not be <laughs> Okay, but, but if x is a stack and maybe f is perfect, then the total space will be a stack. Okay, so the inner sparks of the conjunction complex is the following um, for any uh, for any affine mapping to x. And M a connective R module, so a DG R module concentrated on positive homological degrees, maps uh, from the pullback into M, maps in R modules are the same as maps in derived pre stacks 
uh, the diplomat from Spakar. Uh, maps from the Square Zero extension index. Okay. So, for instance, for an affine. Just have um, maps uh, from the quadrantic complex of this affine into M. Uh, maps uh, from and this is happening in the mix of algebras uh, with a map to A. This is happening in. Uh, so x has turned into spec a, and uh, so th th this was for any spec r mapping to x, yeah. and for an affine, it's enough to just specify for the final object, which is uh, spec a mapping to spec f. So f became variance. So obviously, you have a shift by n in this universal problem. Shift what by n? Well, you said the shift was oh, that shift. Um, it's just the, the category of Cosmere sheaves um, oh, okay. is a stable category, so if you can shift right, it really... Okay. But what I want to observe is the following. Okay, so, so um, in this universal forms, you can just plug in m equals to the quadratic complex itself. And then you have the identity map from the quadratic complex to itself. Which should correspond to some uh, map on the right. <coughs> so it goes to a map from A to A uh, uh, square zero extended by the quadratic complex. And I'll denote this map. Uh, it sends a little A to A and then around the turn. So here, here, this is my, uh, what I introduce. D wrong is the wrong differential. Okay, so this is the the, the, the wrong differential. It, it it goes from it's a derivation from it's a universal derivation from A into the quadratic process. So from A into one forms. Now I want to extend this to all forms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define the drum complex of A uh, to be the symmetric algebra on the shift of the complex. So if you think about this as being just a vector space, then the symmetric algebra on the shift is the same as the exterior algebra. So this looks like Looks like the exterior algebra. <coughs> okay, so, so let's let's look at what kind of object this is. Well, so this is symmetric algebra or something, so this is a complete symmetric algebra. Besides that, well, okay, so it has a grading coming from the fact that it's a DG algebra, and it also has a grading just because it's a symmetric algebra or something. So it has two gradings. First of all, just the internal cohological grading. What I would call the weight grading. So you just put the random complex in weight one. And again, if you think about just the quadrantic complex being a vector space, then the two gradients coincide. 
but in general, the Kovach complex has solved some interesting gradient then. So the first, uh, first of all, again, this is a complex, so it has a differential. And there's a way of extending the wrong differential, uh, which just goes from zero forms to one forms to the whole Durand complex. So it goes from weight <coughs> zero to weight one a priori, but you can extend it to the whole Durand complex. <coughs> so the internal differential, uh, by definition, it's, it preserves the weight. And Convertible degree uh, of the differential is one, and the wrong differential it increases the weight and increases the degree. So next, I want to extend this to uh, general pre stacks. And I'm going to extend it just like I did for functions and for quotient regimes. I know what I do, what I get on affine, so then I just uh, write the limit. Um, before I do that, let me just call this kind of data. So commutative of algebra uh, with two gradings, cohomological grading and weight grading, and two differentials, the internal differential and the wrong differential, I'll call it a graded piece of algebra. So you going to be in DDI to regret some DDI. Uh, so, so they, they commute in the same way. I agree. So we do that. Yeah, so um, <laughs> this is a morphism of complexes, uh, just by construction. So such an object is called a graded peak six p. So here there are two words graded over here. This g refers to the homological degree. And this graded refers to the weight. Um, this G refers to the internal differential, and this mixed refers to the ground differential. Okay, and let me just denote by see how graded called epsilon that means a category of such. So now I can define it for uh, general direct pre stacks. Sorry, may I ask what, what the equivalence is on this? Sorry? What, what's an equivalence in this infinity category? Yeah, so it's an equivalence, it's an equivalence on the, on the graded parts. So if I get the mixed uh, differential on it, it's just an equivalence of graded situations. If you get the mixed up. Yep. So, um, so for the derived pre stack, it's the Rama algebra is defined as I said for, uh, as for affine, uh, as for functions and quadratic regimes. So I'll take the limit. We're all affine stacking to x. 
of the drum compass of the alpha. So again, what this means is that for every alpha I'm mapping to x, I have a differential form, and they're compatible on the map. And the, the sum is taking this category of great mixed topics. Okay, so, so this is a little bit abstract. Um, and in general, there is, it's impossible to get any handle on this object. So we, we only know this is a graded mixed object. Another thing we know is that it's, uh, it's grade zero part. So if I write uh, parentheses means weight zero part, these functions, just because you can take weight zero part here, this is going to be the limit of the weight zero parts here, and the weight zero part of the ROM complex by definition is just R. <coughs> but we don't even know what is uh, the weight one part of this in general. This is a sim over A. That's right. And sorry, can you say like where things are living, uh, like negative, positive? Uh, so, so the minus one always confuses. Like which way is? Uh, Cohomologically, it's minus it one to the right. Plus, you know. um, so, so it means if this is a vector space, this is constrained in cohomology to be plus one. Okay. So in particular, these are not. Uh, that's right. But they're all constrained in, in non mixing weights. Uh, no, the conundrum complex, uh, well, I, I didn't put any weight in itself in the conundrum complex, but the drum algebra is just a symmetric, symmetric algebra on something, so it only has positive weights or non mixing weights. Oh, wait. Sorry. Um, so something you would expect is that the drum algebra looks like it is on affines. Well, so what you can do is that you can take a similar formula, just global sections over x of the symmetric algebra on the companion complex, and you would expect this to be the same as the drum complex. So what you have, well, if you have a map from um, from an affine into x, you can pull back this to an affine. Um, yeah, and, and you, have, you have this pullback map up to the affine, and this is compatible with maps from affines. So get a, a map to the limit, just by being responsible to the limit, So here I'm just looking at this as a graded CGJ. I didn't put any mixed structure. There's no drum differential on the left-hand side. I, I don't know how to put drum differential on this. So this is map of graded CGJs. And the theorem is that if X is a nice stack, This maps in the corners. Okay, so for nice stacks, like quotient stacks um, of, let's say, schemes by groups, that you, uh, you understand the drum algebra at least as a graded algebra in this way, and then there's some interesting drum dimension. So I'll, I'll give some example of uh, how this looks like for quotient stacks. So now that I have the drum algebra, I can talk about uh, closed forms. So yeah, and from now on, I'll just uh, always assume that my my three stacks are nice, so this map is always closed. So a P form, 
on x of degree n, by definition, is an element <coughs> uh, omega of the Brom algebra of weight p n degree p plus n. <coughs> so there, there's a little bit of clash of uh, terminology here. I'm saying of degree n, and here I'm saying, I'm saying degree p plus n, but that's just because of the way I uh, edit the extra shape in here. You can write the zero algebra without the shift, then it's going to be actually degree n. Uh, let us say it's a closed element. respect to, to the internal differential. And a closed form well this is going to be a power series. I'll say in, in, in a moment why I'm looking at power series. Omega p plus omega p plus one, and so on. Um, where omega k has weight k, and degree uh, p plus n. And such that this power series is close with respect to the total differential. Okay, so let me try to unpack this uh, equation. So here there are uh, elements of different weights. So here I'm increasing the weight, and these two differentials uh, do something differently with respect to the weight. So d preserves the weight, and d to run increases the weight. So there, there, there's going to be some mixing between these terms. So let me explain what this means. So uh, the weight p part, uh, so the only weight p part is d of omega p, because d around will increase the weight. N of uh, No, n is uh, this n is this is n. K is for all k. So yes, so the first equation is just d omega p is zero. Okay, so, so the next equation is in weight p plus one. Then you'll see that d to rom of omega p is has p plus one, and the other the other term of degree p plus one is d of omega p plus one. It has to be zero and then the higher values. Okay, so the first equation uh, precisely says that omega p is a p form of of degree n. So it's a d closed element. The second equation says that uh, I apply d to omega p, and maybe this is not strictly strictly speaking zero, but it's zero of the homotopy. And omega p plus one is the homotopy. And the higher equations will tell me that well, that homotopy itself is not strictly closed, but it's strictly it's closed up to a higher homotopy. Okay, so this is a kind of coherently closed differential form. Can you say just one more of them? Uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's going to continue like this. Like the first three terms appear. Uh, no, no, just. Uh, Oh, it's always. Um, Durham increases the weight by one, and D preserves the weight, so the Durham will be the same terms. Are there only one of these that would be closed? Let me try to formalize a question. Wait, on the top line, though, like, on the top where you say that each of the K is a degree P plus N, so that means that there you're not claiming X. 
Yes, so, so, uh, th there's this cl class of terminology, uh, clash of terminology. Um, I say p form degree m. Th th this means how how it's shifted from degree p. It it's it's just the convention how I decided to grade the, the algebra. You, you can take this as uh, yeah as as a as a as a, as a, as a notion um, as a, uh, it's just an entity. And this degree m means converge with degree p plus m in the Brown algebra, but it's kind of shit how far it's shifted from there. Okay, but, but answering that question, um, these forms uh, actually form. And if it's a group void, it'll denote by A or P of X comma N. And it has the following description. So the vertices uh, are just declosed. Um, Elements uh, omega uh, weight p degree p plus n uh, edges are uh, elements. Let me call them h. So edges from omega naught to omega one. Our elements H uh, in the drawn complex, weight P, uh, degree P plus N minus 1, uh, such that D of H is equal to omega 1 minus omega 0. So this is exactly the same. Um, I forget what uh, Jared called it, uh, the Hintz group void that appeared in Balkan um, correspondence with the Jared mentioned. Are you saying that even better there's actually like a chain complex? Okay. Uh, the, the chain complex is the Durham complex itself of the weight and the weight P part of the Durham complex. Um, it's the Durham complex itself of the Durham complex. And then you just apply Balkan to that. Okay. Yeah, it's in a similar way, you can define uh, the closed forms. Yeah. Is there a way that you can explain closure using the word simple? Um, kind of. Uh, let, let, me, let me say this in a second. Um, so it's the same notation, except that I put uh, close. So the, the idea is that um, gradient mixed um, maybe, maybe this is a little bit of an aside. Uh, so what kind of objects are, are these? Well, so these are um, CDPAs. Okay, so let's let's put a graded. Uh, Structure. So, what is what is a grading on a vector space? It, it's a, it's a GM action. Okay, so this is uh, graded CDJs. Uh, it's the category of GM covariant CDJs. Uh, the mixed structure. Um, so, there are several ways of encoding this. You, you can take the semi direct product of GM. And um, uh, what do we call this shifted affine line or shifted uh, opposite group? 
So this is closer related to uh, to the circle that you mentioned, except uh, in, in here's talk, uh, the circle induced uh, differential degree minus one. Here I'm putting it this in degree one. Uh, that's about the difference. Okay, but this is Uh, I, I would not think of this as a shift tangent of GM. Uh, shift tangent of GM. So first of all, you, you want to put a good structure in that. I'm not quite sure what which good structure. You want to put. Yeah. Yeah. No, but this uh, the closed point is something like not from some kind of. Uh, yeah, it's a two unit sphere. The, the yeah, you, you can you can say closed forms are maps in great mixed complexes from a trivially graded um, element into the ground complex. Uh, uh, if you're uh, I meant like you know, Find this AP, this blue part. Yeah. Yeah, you, you can, you, you, in another closure, you, you just drop this. Uh, no, I mean, you can find the close that maps into AP. It's not a subspace. It's not a subspace. It maps from like a uh, you know, uh, point in the circle. Beginning of the circle. Yeah, but I don't know how to coherently this. Coherently express that. Uh, I think the only way is to just define it separately. There's a beautiful map in closed forms to the forms. Okay. Yeah, so, so this is the idea of uh, differential forms is, is that, okay, so a P form is what you would expect, so it's an element of the wrong complex. A closed form, maybe it's not something you would expect, but if you think about homotopy coherent objects, uh, you might come up with such a definition. And this definition has a uh, very easy intense categorical description. It's a mapping space. Um, and so it's homotopy invariant, uh, which is why it's useful. OK. All right, so, so next I want to uh, mention an example of the Durand complex, which is what happens for quotient signs. Okay, so let's look at x. Um, let's call it system T. And g the group scheme. Then you can uh, form the drawn complex of x mod g, and you can ask, so how can I compute that? Okay, so if you look at, uh, if you recall the definition of x mod g, it was given by some co limit of the corresponding bar construction. And uh, by definition, the drawn complex takes uh, co-limits of, uh, so because just because it's a limit of something, by definition, takes co-limits of free stacks to limits <coughs> of the drawn complex. So this means that the drawn algebra on x1 g, this is the limit. Uh, so this was a simplicial scheme. Now I'm getting a co-simplicial um, gradient mix in the green. Okay. So uh, let me say how to think about uh, such limits. So whenever you have a co-simplicial complex, its limit is just the total complex of this co-simplicial object. So explicitly, as a complex, 
It's the total compass. Uh, meaning that I can say drum of x, drum x plus g integral plus one, and so on. And as the differential, I put just the alternating sum of the um, of the phase of the co-phase maps that I have here in the concentration complex. So this is what you expect just the function come out here. You might call this the Chuck model of invariant homology. And this is the answer for what the drum compass is. Maybe it's really difficult to compute with the Czech model. There might be some smaller models. So, for instance, there's the Cartan model of uh, cohomology that we mentioned the relationship between these two. So, if you assume that G is reductive, then this, drum, this Czech model is actually equivalent to something much smaller, which is called the, the Cartan model. Let me write it out explicitly. So I'm going to write a graded mix in GJ computing one to next one G in case two. First of all, how, how is this supposed to look like? So in general, the drum complex uh, is supposed to be sections of x mod g, symmetric algebra on the covalent complex, shifted by minus one. And if you recall from last lecture, I mentioned that the covalent complex of x mod g, so it's a g covariant complex on x, and this looks like the covalent complex in degree zero, and then G dual uh, in Q plus one. And this is the dual of the action. Okay, so then you would expect uh, the drum complex to be um, the same So first of all we have the usual draw algebra, if you forget about G-Dual. Uh, then you have uh, this G-Dual, which is in degree plus one, and then I shift it up by another one, so this G-Dual will be in degree plus two. And then taking, I'm taking sections over something mod G, which means that I need to take G invariance. So let me just write this as drum of drum x. Then there's some g dual, which is by by minus two g invariance. So here g, uh, I assume that g is reductive, so g invariance actually means literally invariance, otherwise you have to take some kind of right invariance. Okay, so what, what, are, what are the mixed structures and what is the, uh, the internal differential? So the, the drum differential 
the only way that you have a Durand differential is that you have something in Durand of x. And then the internal differential, well, maybe, maybe for, simply, for simply, so let me assume that x is an affine scheme, so there's no homology. Then there is no internal differential in the Durand complex of x. It's just a symmetric algebra on the, on the potential bundle, on the shape of the potential bundle. And then the internal differential is just the covariant differential. So it just comes from this collection. So this is called the covariant differential. Okay. And the weights uh, are, as so you can read them off here. So the weight of, on the drum complex is the, the weight I explained, and the weight of this GD minus two is one, while its degree is plus two. So let me give a sub-example here. So, so the upshot of the discussion is that the wrong complex of quotient sets is pretty easy to compute. But let's say it's a it just reductive. It, it's just the Cartan model of covariant cohomology, and in this model, I just gave you a great mix of here. So. so let's consider the case when x is just a point. So I'm looking at the classifying stack. And again, G is reductive. Well, if you look at this formula, uh, this drama algebra of x goes away, and you just get symmetric algebra of G dual shifted by minus 2, G invariance. So for instance, So the, the weight uh, is explained down here. So, so you have the weight on the symmetric algebra. So, so, the, so, um, so the, in this drama algebra, the weight p part is in degree two p. Because I don't have any uh, drama of x. The ground differential is just zero, and again, just because I again don't have an x, uh, the internal differential is zero. So it's, it's a super easy uh, great mix of g. So, so you only have uh, you only have p forms of degree p. Again, this degree p means it's shifted by p from p, which means in the drum algebra it has degree 2p. And because the drum differential is zero, these forms are automatically closed. Of uh, P forms of degree P, of 
closed key forms or the same as ordinary key forms. This is just key multilinear mm. functions. Okay, so we'll return to this example later when I talk about the talk about some like. So let me define symplectic structures on stacks. Uh, so recall that it acts as a smooth scheme. And let's say dimension D. Then a symplectic structure. Closed two form omega uh, which is non degenerate. So there are many ways of saying non degeneracy for a closed two form. One way to say uh, non degeneracy is that if you raise omega to the dth power, uh, so that it becomes a section of the uh, canonical bundle, uh, sorry, uh, of dimension 2D, then if you have a 2 form, you get a 2D form. Uh, you can say that the dth power of omega defines a volume form, so this section is non vanishing. And this condition is equivalent to the following. Uh, omega defines a map from the tangent to the cotangent bundle, which I'll call omega sharp, uh, which sends a vector field, B, to the contraction of this vector field into omega. So you contract the vector field into, into a two form, you get a one form, so a section of the tangent form. And this condition is equivalent to saying that this map is nice and more Okay, so for uh, for ordinary symplectic like structures, there, there there are two ways of defining non-degeneracy. When I uh, move on to derived stacks, well, I don't know what the dimension of the derived stack means, and this notion will not make sense. But this notion perfectly makes sense. Okay, so I'm going to generalize it uh, in this way. So let's say x is some uh, derived free stack. And omega 2 is a closed two form. So far, let's just say it's a two form. Of degree n. So it means that it's a section uh, of sim 2 uh, on the cotangent complex shifted by minus 1. Okay, so I can forget about the fact that it's symmetric. And I can identify this um, when I forget the fact that it's symmetric. It comes from the tangent complex, which is the dual of the tangent complex, uh, into the shift of the tangent complex by tangent. So here, this is just the same as. Yep. So uh, I'll call this home again omega sharp. Omega two sharp. 
So again, from a two form, you can get a map from the tangent to the tangent component. <coughs> So um, then I'll call an the end shift a smaller structure. <coughs> on some uh, drive presec X uh, to be a closed to form mega. So we call that this means it's a formal power series of degree n. Such that if I look at the degree two part, as oh, sorry, the way two part is a two form, I can look at the sharp map, which is a map from the tangent to the tangent complex. Allows this to be a quite as more. Okay, so let me give two examples. First of all, let's start with it. Smooth scheme. Well, then both tangent and cotangent complex are just vector bundles in degree zero. <coughs> and so the only quadratic morphism you can have is when n is zero. Otherwise, they're just in different. So here I'm omitting some stupid examples from the tangent complex to just zero, for instance, the point is zero example. So you can only have zero shift of symmetric structures, and then a zero shift of symmetric <coughs> structure on X is just an ordinary symmetric. So this is generally a generalization of the local symmetric structures. The second example is related to the classifying stack, so what I just draw here. So let's say, let's say G is a reductive group. Uh, and let's look at shift the simplex structures on BG. Okay, so let me remind you that the cotangent complex of BG that's the cogent representation in degree plus one, the tangent complex which is its, its dual, it's that joint representation in degree minus one. So the only quadrate morphism you can have is when you shift it by two. And to have a shift of symmetric structure, you have to give a closed two form of degree two, which I've already written here. So this space of closed two forms is just the space of G invariant symmetric bilinear pairings. And non degeneracy of the symmetric structure. is the same as saying that this pairing is not adherent. So, 
for instance, if G is a simple uh, group, then the space is one dimensional. So what is the, like, the, the extra part here to tell you about the interaction anyway with this? Uh, What, what drags? Somehow it's not in the definition, it's just there. So in the, the yeah, yeah, the uh, I, I would say that there are two parts the, the, the fact that omega 2 is closed and the fact that omega 2 is non zero. So it changes like the property of omega 2. Yeah, but non zero is a property, no, no. it is a data. Yeah, okay. uh, for DG closure, um, due to this example, closure is not a data. But in general, it's but there's no condition on that so far. No, there's no non zero condition on that so far. No, I mean, you're saying it's not uh, uniquely defined in omega 2. So there's no condition on it. Because there's no condition on omega 3 as long as. Yeah, but it's not uniquely defined in omega 2. Like, not up to. Correct. There, there are different. Uh, you can provide. You can construct different homogeneous. Did you say again how you define the closure concept? Yes, yeah, so, so uh, the category of quasi coherent sheaves on X is a smart panel in the inclusive category. Whatever this means. You can talk about dualizable objects. So, let me recall that an object is dualizable if there exists a dual object and the evaluation and coevaluation pairings. Satisfy some axioms. In the case of coherent sheaves, the lizable objects are called perfect complexes. If the quadratic complex happens to exist, and if it happens to be perfect, then the tangent complex is just the dual of the quadratic complex. Okay. Uh, so in all the examples that I'm considering, uh, my quadratic complex uh, exists. Okay. They always have the maps, but they don't necessarily satisfy the axioms. Who's they? Or the TX in LA. Uh, if, if you define TX to be home from LX into O, yeah. uh, then it will have the evaluation, but it will not have the decor evaluation. Oh, okay. oh. So it's like a finite one. Yep. I thought perfect even means like uh, in, in this case, uh, if X is not fine, uh, they will coincide. Because it's not fine. Yeah. Oh, and sure. and, 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 for a nice class of stacks, uh, they will also come so. Okay, so let me give another example of uh, our shift selective stacks. Okay, so again, let's say X is a nice uh, free stack. Uh, derived free stack. And 
by nice, I just mean it has a tangent corpus and has a cotangent corpus. And then you can look at, at the end shift of cotangent snap. Okay, so if you recall uh, some class on differential geometry, the cotangent bundle of the manifold is itself a symplectic manifold. And um, the way the symplectic structure is constructed is by giving a one form, the current of one form on the cotangent bundle, and the symplectic structure is the differential of that one form. So this, this construction, this canonical one form, generalizes to a shifted case. So there's a canonical one form. Uh, on this shifted Kalanji stack of degree n. Uh, this is called the Nibu one form. Lambda. And you can define a closed two form just by uh, looking at the realm of lambda. So because it's the realm of something, it's automatically closed. So this is going to give you. A closed two form on the cat of the chip of the stack of degree n, just because lambda had a degree n. And a theorem is that this is actually non -carried. Let me give a sub example. This example. So, at some point, I want to get to some kind of structure step theory in representation theory. So, I want to talk about things related to groups and <coughs> So, this example has omega 3, or potentially omega 3, omega 4, and so on. So, so depending, on it, depending on, I would say, on, on the model. Of how you think about differential forms, like ha not having or not having omega three and so on depends on the particular model of the drawn compass. This, this notion is not stable on the coordinates of the But if you fix a model of the drawn compass of the cotangent stack, and you fix lambda, which is honestly a one form, then the drawn of lambda is honestly a closed two form, and it doesn't have any entire ones in that given model. Yeah, uh, well, it's, of course, it's de declosed, but uh, it doesn't have any name. Maybe the, the point, point is that, that Dieter M defines a morphism from the space of yeah. all forms to the space of Yeah, that, that, that's also a good way of saying this. Dram. Yeah. Mm. If I deep with Dram to this, this is going to be zero. Because D of lambda is zero. Okay, so uh, a sub example of this example is to take X being BG and N being Y. So, but you don't know. Uh, this is not in the code. We can have closed uh, two forms which are not exact. So we don't come to this. Okay. So, so what's happening in this is in this case, well, the cotangent complex is g dual in degree plus one. So I'm supposed to take the total space of the shifted cotangent complex, or if I shift it by one, I'm just going to get the cotangent uh, representation. So it shouldn't be difficult to see that the total space of the coordinate representation is the coordinate quotient of G dual by D. 
So from this discussion, you see that g do mod g has a canonical point of prism particle. A good exercise is to compute that much of the symmetric structure in the Cartan model. In the Cartan model, it will be honestly almost two point, there will be no level three and so on. And uh, tomorrow I'll mention how this relates to the Poisson structure on GDU itself. Okay, so next I want to talk, so, so here I talk about symplectic structures. In symplectic geometry, there's not sure a notion of a submanifold which is compatible with symplectic structure, so it's, it's an isotropic submanifold or a Lagrangian submanifold. So we can talk about that. Recall that if X is a symplectic scheme and L instead of X is isotropic, if uh, omega restricted to L is zero. called Lagrangian if in addition L is half dimensional. Okay, again, uh, there is some condition which involves dimensions of L and X. So I want to reformulate this condition so that it doesn't involve any dimensions, so then I can generalize it to stacks. <coughs> Lagrangian condition is equivalent to the following. So let's look at the tangent bundle of the Lagrangian. Well, it maps to the restriction. Uh, of, the, of the tangent bundle of X restricted to L, and this is an embedding. Uh, what I can do then is I, I can apply omega sharp, I can turn into a cotangent bundle of X, and then I can restrict it back to L. So the isotropic condition that omega is equal to zero tells me that this is a sequence. So the composite of these two maps is zero. And the Lagrangian condition <coughs> is equivalent to saying that this is a sequence. This is going to be my definition in the right context. Okay. So let's say f from L to x is a morphism of direct free stacks. Suppose that X is actually symplectic. Mm. 
So we have a closed two form on x of degree n, which is not a derivative. Uh, I'll say in the n shift of isotropic structure. On this map f, is a null homotopy of the pullback. In closed two forms. Oh, no. So for isotropic manifolds, I just say that the form restricts to zero. While I'm working not with sets, I'm working with infinity groupoids. So I can ask instead of this being zero, I can ask this to be homo. That's the structure. Right. And then Lagrangian will be a condition on that structure. So here the condition was that the dimension of the Lagrangian is half of the dimension of the, the manifold, or that this sequence is exact. And now I'm, I'll put an extra condition on this exact structure. So Lagrangian structure is an unshifted isotropic structure. Such that the analog of the sequence is exact. So you replace the tangent bundle by the tangent complex. The restriction of the tangent bundle of x to L pullback, and then they have the cotangent complex of L. Because this was n shifted in omega sharp, uh, there's an extra shift by n. There's a shift by n. And uh, the condition is that such that this is an exact sequence. So if you think about the right category, um, this exact sequence no notion is the same as saying that this is a distinguished triangle. And that comes because of anomaly that you So that's the isotropic uh, structure. So the isotropic structure uh, gives you a null homotopy of the composite. Okay, so maybe let me um, expand what I mean by mesotropic structure by analogy with uh, what I did with closed forms. Well, uh, you're going to have several conditions for different weights. So, so let's say the whole of is H. H will be again a power series. Where HK is in the wrong complex of L. And so the conditions are the pullback of omega 2 is DH2, the pullback of omega 3 is uh, D the wrong of H2 plus DH3. So the first condition is saying that omega 2 as a 2 form is null homotopic. And then the, the other conditions are saying that the homotopy sequence in the closure data are the, themselves null homotopic as well. So it's basically 
Yes. So can we do the end shift with symplectic structure and the special case? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll get that in a second. Uh, so what can we do? Okay, so let me give. Uh, okay, let me give, begin with the example of the atom inspection. So let's say X is a point. Well, a point is a smooth scheme, but in fact, it has an end shift like structure for any atom. So the zero form is an end shift Tangent complex is zero, the tangent complex is zero, so of course zero is quite smart than zero. Okay, and let's say you have some L. Well, it has a unique projection to the point. So you can ask what is an end shifted Lagrangian structure on that? So first of all, let's read the isotropic structure. So the left hand side is zero. So you actually get equations defining a closed two form. This null homotopy is a closed two form on L of degree n minus 1. And the Lagrangian condition, uh, the fact that this is an exact sequence, in this case it's easy because the middle term is 0. This null holding H defines an H minus one shift simplex structure. Okay. So um, let me. Okay, so, so before I get, give the next example, let me uh, give some construction of something that can do with Lagrangian structures. So suppose that X is n shift symplectic. And L1 and L2 are two dry stacks mapping into X, and they have n shift Lagrangian structures. Fiber product of L1, L2 over X. The fiber product in schemes just means intersection of schemes, so you should think about this as being an intersection of stacks. Then the claim is that this has a natural n minus one shift. So let me illustrate these notions on some example, uh, so some of trivial example of shifted symmetric structures and Lagrangian structures. And this is going to be an example that uses this one shifted symmetric structure on G one two. So let's say x is a smooth scheme. <coughs> and suppose you have a G-covariant map from x to the degree of the V algebra. Well, if you have a G-covariant map, you can just portion it by G. So then you get a map from x mod G to GD mod G. As I explained previously, G little mod G has a bunch of disinflective structure.
they would ask, when does this have a Lagrangian function? Okay, so you have to write out these equations. So you have to write down the representative of the symplectic structure in some model of the drawn complex of the target. You have to pull it back and you have to write out these equations. So what we discover is that the non homotopy um, so you can only have H2 plus H3. All the higher ones will just live in the wrong degrees. And this H2 will define a two form on X. And then uh, these equations, so you'll essentially have two equations. You'll have an equation saying that new pullback of omega 2 is d h2 and then as I mentioned you don't have omega 3 so you have d1 of h2 they're saying that h2 is a close to form on x and then it satisfies some equation uh, with respect to the current differential It turns out that this equation, if you just write down this equation in the Cartan model, is exactly the model of map equation. So in other words, H2 is a symplectic structure on X, and mu is a moment map. So the non-degeneracy condition is the non-degeneracy condition of the work. Is that once you have the Lagrangian structure, a mu is the same as the symplectic structure, on x, uh, for which mu the moment okay. Well, that's nice. Um, so what can you do with that? I can try to apply this theorem about intersection of Lagrangians. I can take one symplectic, man symplectic scheme with a moment map, I can try to intersect with another one. So a simple example would be to take x to be a point. So a point has a moment map, just a zero moment map. So the inclusion of the origin inside of G dual, by this discussion, it has a one to look And by the theorem, the Lagrangian intersection, so you intersect x mod g, that's one Lagrangian, instead of g two mod g, and another Lagrangian is point mod g. This has a symplectic structure. Uh, this were one shift Lagrangian um, maps, so the intersection will have a zero shift symplectic structure. Now, 
let's kind of understand what how this space looks like. 